fantastic. So excited to be here to announce today that Sydney will be bidding for 10 World Cups in 10 years. And right by our side, leading this process will be none other than Rod McGee, the man who won the Sydney Olympic Games for us in the year 2000. I'm so thrilled also to have representatives here from across many sports who will be part of this bidding process. We want to bring these world events to Sydney and we want to be the events capital, not just of Australia, that's a given. Does this bring wonderful sporting events to our great city and our great state? But it also invests in jobs and investment and boosts into the economy. This is a great plan for us to do. It is ambitious but absolutely achievable. And uh, Rod McGeoch will lead the task force, will lead the team to win us these bids, to win us these world events. And I'm thrilled to have so many of our elite athletes here with us today to really demonstrate the support we have across the sporting community and across the community more broadly to invest in these global events. Uh, we are here investing in infrastructure to make this possible and I'm absolutely thrilled, delighted and pleased that Rod McGeoch has answered the call yet again. He answered the call for the year 2000 Olympics and is answering the call now for me as the Premier to lead the charge in getting these 10 world events uh, to Sydney. I also want to acknowledge and thank the Minister for Sports, Stuart Ayres, and the Minister for Major Events, Adam Marshall, for really pulling together our plans and our vision for the next decade to make sure Sydney is front and centre of attracting these events. And I know what a boost this will be for all our athletes. No matter which code and which sport, uh, we will be bidding for these world events, which will boost the involvement, the activity of young people in particular who want to look forward to and participate in these events when they come to Sydney. I'll now throw it over. Thanks, Ron. Morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it's a great pleasure to be on the foreshores of Sydney with the Premier and the, the two ministers who I often work for. Um, for those of you who aren't aware, I'm a director of Destination New South Wales, which uh, is responsible for you know our outcomes in tourism and events. And it's important that everybody understands that they're still going to be intimately involved in, in helping us win all these events. I'm chairman of the events subcommittee at Destination New South Wales, so I've been still chasing events ever since 1993 when we won the Sydney Olympics. Um, there's a great team there, uh, there's an enormous support from the Premier and the two Ministers that are on either side of me, who I work with regularly anyway. Um, I do have a view that when governments ask me to help, I'm here to help. But I do also have a, a special fondness for the Premier. I work in Armenia from time to time. I've been there actually more times than she has. And uh, we have great discussions about that wonderful country and it's a very meaningful place for me as well. So when I'm asked by her and Adam Marshall and Stuart Ayres, would I become involved just a little bit more to win some slightly bigger events, I'm more than happy to do so. Have we got a chance to win them? Of course we do. It's not about the money. You know, when we bid for the Sydney Olympic Games, Berlin spent $75 million against me we spent 20, they got five votes out of 90 and we won. So it's getting the right people around you, getting the strategy right. And then of course Sydney sells itself. But some of these events will be shared in the regions as well. And of Marshall will make sure I do that. Um, and so we should, um, because we're here for the whole of the state. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to work as hard as I can with the team of people around me. There are great people here in Sydney that have got all this bidding experience from before. And I'm sure we can deliver the outcome for the government. Many thanks. Great, thanks, Rob. This is about putting the best sports in the best cities, in the best facilities. It's about making sure New South Wales stays the number one location for sporting events, not just in Australia, but across the Asia Pacific over the next 10 years. This city and this state has a wonderful history in hosting major events. And as this city grows into one of the most important cities in the Asia Pacific, it's so critical that we stay on the front foot. It can't just be a year to year proposition. We have to look out over the next 10 years because that's what the sports are doing. They're planning five and 10 years ahead across their major events. It's why we want to see women's cricket. It's why we want to see women's football. It's why we want to see the Rugby World Cup. 
There are plenty of sports that are out showcasing their product on the global stage and there simply is not a better location than New South Wales to showcase your sport to the world. Thank you Premier, uh, Stu and, uh, and Rod. Uh, this is a very exciting day for New South Wales and I say New South Wales because this is not just about bringing uh, major events, major sporting events, World Cups uh, into Sydney over the next 10 years, but also in other parts of the state as well. Uh, some of these events have been held in Australia before, some haven't. Some of these events have never even been held in the Southern Hemisphere before. This is a very ambitious bid by our government on behalf of the people of the state to bring these events to our state. Why? Because it is important to have the best of the best in the best state in Australia. But importantly, major events are not just things that people can go and visit and have a good time, but they're critical to the local economy, underpinning and sustaining jobs and creating new ones in this state. And I'm absolutely thrilled and uh, great to have uh, the Premier's support, great to have Rod on board. Uh, I think we've got a great team uh, and uh, I think we'll do pretty well in attracting these events to our state. Sorry. <laughs> so, um, I just wanted to say very briefly, um, from a cricket perspective, just how incredibly excited we are to be hosting the World T20 in 2020. Um, it's the first time that the female competition will be a standalone event early in the year, with the men uh, later in the year, and there's going to be five games plus the semi-finals here in Sydney, which is incredibly exciting uh, for us and the sport with some really lofty and high expectations and crowd numbers of participation in that event. But I think certainly from a broad perspective with the New South Wales government, um, to have all these athletes standing behind um, us today and the fact that there's so many great opportunities to showcase their sport to the New South Wales public uh, is incredibly exciting. So thank you very much for your support from our ministers and uh, we very much look forward to 2020. Thanks. Right. Thanks. Thanks, Premier. Uh, look, it's wonderful to uh, be here today at this, uh, this announcement. And I think from rugby's perspective, I mean, all the sports will be feeling the same. To have the opportunity to host a World Cup in your home region is, is wonderful. I got to play in three World Cups, but none of them were in Australia, but I got to watch the one in 2003 here. And now from rugby's perspective, we're, we're bidding for both a, a Women's World Cup and a Men's World Cup, which is the ultimate honour in, in our sport, in our 15-side format in our sport. Obviously the sevens are at the Olympics, but to be able to have the potential to host them at home in New South Wales is, is a wonderful opportunity. So thank you. Premier, I suppose how much is all this going to cost? Uh, well look, we haven't costed each event and how we'll bid for it, and that's the advice we'll take from Ron McGeeock. As you said, it's not about the money. Uh, he spent less than many other cities around the world in the year 2000 Olympics, and we still won the Olympics. So we'll make sure uh, that we take Rod's advice. I think he's the global expert in attracting major events, and I'm thrilled that he's working for the New South Wales government. But we know that uh, if we attract these events, it will contribute at least a billion dollars to our visitor economy alone. That, that's, just the, that's just the visitor economy. Uh, not, not to comment on all the other positive benefits that, that hosting global events like this plays to a city and a state. Premier, the event, uh, the Sydney Olympics was a single city event, but uh, Why, why wouldn't we? This is a huge boost for sport in our state and for Australia. Uh, we are Australia's global city. Why shouldn't we host these global events? It's a, it's a no-brainer as far as I'm concerned. And not only is it the dollars and the jobs it brings in, but to support our athletes to really engender a positive culture about participation in sport and healthy and active life lifestyles, as well as uh, continuing to put Sydney on the map. We need to think about what will give our city and our state the edge in years to come. We know the world's getting really competitive. We know that people are looking at alternatives when it comes to investing and creating jobs. We want Sydney to be the lead, not just in Australia, but in our region for hosting global events. We know that this will, of course, attract jobs and investment and boost the economy, but more than anything, it will give us heart and soul and allow us to really support our elite athletes, support these great sports, but also support young people now and into the future. Premier, we're spending around $2 billion on two or three new stadiums. Half of these events can't actually be uh, played in this stadium. Well, what you need to do is make sure you have flexibility. You need to make sure that the venues you're building and upgrading today are part of a network 
of venues which can host multiple events. And uh, as Rod and I were, were discussing just before today, uh, there may be other opportunities for us to think for additional things. I mean, this is subject to, this is a list we've put, this is the targets we've set ourselves. If there's opportunities for us to bid for additional things, of course we will. But what is important is you cannot bid for world events if you do not have world-class venues. You cannot bid for global events if you've not invested in the infrastructure that's required to really bring these events uh, to Sydney. And why should we sit back and lose these events elsewhere because we haven't done the hard yards? We're a government that will always uh, do the work that's required, make the investments that are required, and I'm proud of the fact that we're promoting all sports, all codes, but also women as well as men's sports, and that's really important. So where are you going to play the netball for me? Well, obviously, uh, there's alternative venues for that. I, I went to the International Convention Centre last a couple of weeks ago and watched the Giants and the Swifts play. So there's multiple venues across Sydney uh, that we have to play those sports. And it's a question of us being agile and flexible and smart. But the important thing is, when you develop your world-class venues, it increases your options on what you can host, but also where you can host them and how you host them. And I'm really looking forward uh, to us not only bringing these events to Sydney, but also looking at other opportunities we have uh, to host events. Okay, on your point about why wouldn't you host for, bid for events, why didn't we bid for the Commonwealth Games in 2026, 2030? Well look, we considered uh, the options of the 2026 Commonwealth Games, we just didn't feel it fit into uh, the, the needs we had for attracting events, so we did consider that, we did our due diligence, uh, we said no to 2026, but we leave the door open for future dates for the Commonwealth Games. So no to 2026, but we're not ruling out future Commonwealth Games hostings. We needed to look at what was uh, manageable and what we thought was in the best interests of Sydney and Australia in the next decade. Uh, but of course, uh, we're open to looking at the Commonwealth Games in the future. Minister, as I ask you, a lot, a lot, the, rugby, the Rugby World Cup is obviously the, the big shining light. Would you expect federal involvement and we going to speak to the other states or do you want to hold the whole thing here? There's multiple venues across Sydney uh, that, that we have, have to play, play those sports and, and it's a question of us being agile, agile and flexible and smart but the, the important thing is when you develop your world class venues it increases your options on what you can host but also where you can host them and how you host them and I'm really looking forward uh, to us not only bringing these events to Sydney but also looking at other opportunities we have to host events. On your point about why wouldn't you host for a bid for events, why didn't we bid for the Commonwealth Games in 2026-2030? Well look, we considered uh, the options of the 2026 Commonwealth Games, we just didn't feel it fit into uh, the needs we had for attracting events, so we did consider that, we did our due diligence, uh, we said no to 2026, but we'll leave the door open for future dates for the Commonwealth Games, so no to 2026, but we're not ruling out future Commonwealth Games hostings, we needed to talk about what was manageable and what we thought was in the best interests of Sydney and Australia in the next decade. Uh, but of course, uh, we're open to looking at the Commonwealth Games. Mr. Ezra, the rugby, the rugby World Cup is obviously the, the big shining light. Would you expect federal involvement when you speak to the other states, or do you want to hold the whole thing here? Very, very keen to host the final of the Rugby World Cup here uh, in the late 2020s. There's no reason why New South Wales cannot host the bulk of that event. Uh, we've seen with uh, major events like World Cups, they really run out of state jurisdictions. The Commonwealth wants to kick the can and help New South Wales out. We'll never say no to a few extra dollars. But we have to speak to Queensland, Victoria, Western Australia if you want to get the Rugby World Cup. Oh, I think um, there's no doubt that we will be right at the forefront of the bid, happy to engage with other states. But let's not kid ourselves here. This is about making sure New South Wales stays at the forefront. When it comes to rectangular sports, we will have the best rectangular network of stadiums anywhere, I think, in the world, uh, in a single jurisdiction. We should go out and chase events that fit with that. The Rugby World Cup, the Rugby League World Cup, uh, when it comes to women's sport, a great opportunity to continue to showcase women in high quality venues where they deserve to be playing their games. The government stadium policy promises an indoor arena um, for netball. We're going for the Netball World Cup. Uh, that hasn't eventuated yet. Does that mean the arena's back on the agenda? Uh, well, the indoor arena has always been part of our long term plan, but we've already hosted a Netball World Cup uh, in the facilities that we have available right now. Kudos Bank Arena hosted the World Cup a couple of years ago. We've got the facilities as they currently exist to showcase netball on the world stage. I think most people consider that the best netball World Cup that has been hosted in many, many years. Uh, by the time we get around to the mid-2020s, I think netball is one of the fastest growing, most exciting sports, and we should be showcasing it in the best city in the world. So the state's netball facilities are currently satisfactory? 
uh, when it comes to hosting a World Cup. We've got the facilities uh, to host that World Cup and we'll continue to reinvest and work with sports like we do across every sport and across every facility that we own. And your question for you, Have the Nationals represented to you that they um, have ruled out running or pre-selecting for the Seagull Water? Yeah. And just an issue uh, on the West Connects bids. Why is the government pushing ahead um, with, the, with closing dates today for the bids when the ACCC um, says it wants until September to consider transurbans bid. Oh look, that's fine. I mean, we can accept conditional bids and if issues emerge after that, that we'll deal with them when they come up. Do you and have do any concerns around transurban? Never have concerns. concerns. When you have a major transaction, you always have challenges during that tra transaction. That's always the case. I've not been involved in a major project or a major transaction that doesn't have these issues emerge. And it's important for us to consider those issues get advice from all those regulatory bodies, that's what they're there for. And of course then it's up to government to make the best decision in the best interest of our taxpayers. When do you expect the sale to be I'm sorry? When do you expect the sale to be right. Oh look, that depends on uh, a number of factors, including um, the HRC's consideration. So uh, we'll await that. Are you confident there's been enough competition throughout this process? Look, I'm confident that the existing timelines exist and uh, and to date, uh, obviously there are no, no, no issues raised. The HRC has indicated it's looking those issues and which it's entirely, entirely appropriate for them to do. And uh, we will always take advice from those regulatory bodies. You have to. And uh, we look forward to that process. We're disappointed though that they needed more time after this entire process. It feels a bit bureaucratic, doesn't it? Oh look, it's, I'm used to it because uh, whenever you run a major transaction, there are so many checks and balances and the public would expect that to happen. We want those checks and balances there. Because at the end of the day, when the government makes an announcement about a major transaction, the government, the public, needs to have full confidence that you've done everything by the book, and also that all the important bodies that give you advice and make sure the system is robust have had their input. So I, I welcome that. It can be frustrating for some people because it means the process does take a lot of time, but that's appropriate because at the end of the day, it's uh, in the best interest of the public to make sure those checks and balances exist. Can we just affected that? farmers continue to feel like they were being listened to by the government. They continue to call for free subsidies. Is that something you've given any more thought to? Uh, absolutely. Uh, we continue to uh, listen and talk to and engage with our farming communities. I've always said if there is more for us to do, we will. Um, we have changed the loan arrangements to make sure farmers can now get interest-free loans for seven years uh, to pay for actually transporting feed because we know how challenging it is for them. Uh, and that means they don't have to pay us back a cent for two years, so we're giving people that relief. Uh, the issues we have with subsidies, which is an ongoing concern, is it pushes up the price, and when the drought's over, the prices continue to be too high, and we're working through those issues. But we have changed the way that we issue our loans. We've put in an extra quarter of a billion dollars to make available to farmers. We know a number of farmers have already taken up those opportunities. So there's a pool of about <laughs> half a billion dollars, interest-free loans. They don't have to pay us back for two years until they get uh, themselves uh, you know, recovered after these difficult circumstances. But I do please want the community to know that this is a top of mind issue for me personally and also for our government. I've been a witness the hardship that many of our communities are facing and I appreciate what they're going through. Our job is to support them through this difficult time. We know the difficult time will end, we just don't know when it will be. And if there is more for us to do, we will do that and we're talking, we've obviously appointed a drought coordinator and she's doing a great job in Pip Job and we'll make sure uh, that through her, but through our direct contact and agencies, if there's more for us to do, we will. Premier, Premier just on Darren McGuire, why wasn't he forced to resign earlier? Uh, we made our, well I personally made my intentions known over the last weekend, the weekend before last, uh, and it was a matter for him and I'm glad he's come to that conclusion. Any Has he resigned yet, Premier? Uh, well, I anticipate that will happen this week. Premier, on the issue of uh, population density, um, yeah. it's come out today that Sydney did some new analysis, perhaps more densely populated than LA and Chicago. Do you think councils in Sydney need to give a little more thought, a little more flexibility to having some larger blocks to kind of ease that population density in the city? Well, certainly as a government, um, we have been working very hard on an open spaces policy, on making sure that there's only development where it's appropriate. <coughs> we understand the concerns that people have about overdevelopment. I share those concerns. We want communities to have diversity in housing, we want communities to grow where appropriate, but we don't want local communities feeling their character is changing too quickly or that things are happening too fast. So we're making sure we have policies in place that allow for communities to grow, but grow appropriately and within accepted standards.
Minister Ayres, quick question. Um, we're applying for the uh, FIFA Women's World Cup. Why not the men's? Uh, the <coughs> the uh, FIFA Women's World Cup is open in 2023. Uh, when we see the bidding arrangements for 2027 or later for the Men's World Cup, we are likely to work uh, with other jurisdictions on a bid there. There's a lot of water to go under the bridge. I want to see how that event evolves uh, before we consider it in detail. We've created a list of 10 target events over the next 10 years uh, that will generate over $1 billion in visitor expenditure. That's about backing New South Wales, it's about backing New South Wales communities, and it's about generating jobs in the best state in Australia. Are our stadiums big enough to host a FIFA World Cup final? Uh, yes. Is it about one, it's a bit like one's burnt, twice shy type thing? <laughs> Got a question for John, if that's right. <laughs>